Bugger that, that's a bit better. Under the control of the parliament or something. Uh, it's technically a city within a city, so it's a, it's a bit like the Vatican over in Rome. Here on the right, this is the first bespoke office building in London. This was records for births, marriages and deaths. It was called the Hatcham, Matcham and Dispatcham building. And then right in front of us is Covent Garden. A lovely place to go for some theatre, for some opera and for some food and drink. Beautiful. Uh, into Aldwych. On our left we're going to see some lovely theatres down Charlotte Street. At the bottom of the street you'll see showing Frozen the Musical, the oldest working theatre in London, Theatre Royal Dury Lane. And here, here on the left is Mamma Mia at the Nouveau Theatre. Excuse me, my tongue today. We have the Wardorf Hotel here on the left with an exact replica of the Titanic. And on the right, India House, the Indian Embassy, which gets lit up in all the colours of the Indian flag every evening. Uh, here is stop number eight outside the Aldwych Theatre. Yeah. Uh, if you're willing to see on the right during its wartime broadcasting services. They used to broadcast uh, secret messages to the front line, hidden in normal radio broadcast. He was in exile while the Nazis were occupying back. He walked up to the front desk and said, I am the King of Denmark, I want to speak to my people. The woman behind the uh, London School of Economics, where Bill and Hillary Clinton went to uni. Also Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones started a degree here. And then, they, then he dropped out after two months. And he was told, you can come back and finish when you retire. Harry Potter films. This is the central chapel for the RAF here. You can see someone from the Highland Regiment and some bishops out here as well. Hello. Cheeky way from a bishop. That must be good luck, surely. <laughs> uh, here, this is the central civil court, the Royal Courts of Justice. So lots of big civil cases happen here. Charles and Diana, they got divorced in these halls. So did Paul McCartney and Heather Mills. Wagatha Christie trials, they took place here. As did Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, round one. It's called Fleet Street. We are currently in where the old journalist quarters used to be, here until the 1980s. Uh, what they've left in their legacy before they moved to uh, uh, on the right, we've got the longest, thinnest pub in London. Here it is on the right, the Old Cock Tavern. It's long and thin, make your own And this one is the longest and thinnest. Private bank in London, Seahor and Company. Where Jane Austen banked the profits for pride and prejudice and sense and sensibility. As we head down here, we've got another lovely pub coming up on the left, marked with a small white lantern. It's it further along down the street behind the traffic lights. Show cheese. Now it's been the seven, the time of King Charles the Third. Another famous <laughs> Charles used to go there for a drink. Charles Dickens he used to sit here in the old Cheshire cheese on the left, and regale passes by with extracts from new books he was working on. The old offices on the left here for the. And the Daily Express offices just here on the left. This has now been a Grade 2 listed because of its architecture, its lovely Art Deco design. Poppins Court on the left, where Mary was on the right. The golden statue of Mr. Punch just outside of it, a statue from a seaside puppet shows. Now, uh, if you know anything about Londoners, you'll know that we cannot be trusted with that information. Gin consumption became a real problem here in the UK. They were promoted for her fairy tale wedding to Prince Charles. They had 8,000 guests. It was a grand affair. Their venue, just St. Paul's Cathedral. The cell, well, the only one larger than this, could be found in the Vatican, which is fair enough, it is the Vatican. So this is a Roman Catholic Basilica, right? The, no, this, uh, this, uh, so this one you can find is uh, over in the Vatican, the Roman Catholic St. Peter's Basilica. This is Church of England. So it's a Protestant church in front of us. It's 365 feet tall because uh, Christopher Wren believed that religion was for every day, not just for Christmas and New Year's. So this is stop number nine for St. Paul's Cathedral.
way out. Oh, we're good up there. It's going to stay for a second. Okay. During World War II, during the Blitz, the Luftwaffe would use St. Paul's Cathedral as a beacon to find their way around the city. So they didn't have many direct hits on St. Paul's. Instead, there were lots of incendiary bombs around here. Churchill had 500 people out every night ringing the bell, the dome down with water. Taxi out into where I live, of course, harmlessly. No one was here. The Lord Mayor does, though. Ah. City and the police, they have a, some red details on their uniform. So as we drive right into the heart of the city, we're going to travel back in time here. We're going to travel back in time 2,000 years. Because while on the surface we've got all these huge skyscrapers, about seven metres below here are some ancient finds. For example, we've got this huge sandy coloured building here on the left. This is the Bloomberg building, big finance firm, headed by the former mayor of New York, Mayor Bloomberg. Also a uh, uh, presidential hopeful in the 2019 US elections. He lost the, uh, the uh, Democratic nomination to Joe Biden. But this is, and uh, they uncovered his temple recently. They've done some uh, restoration work on it, and you can go and visit it for yourself. It is free to do so. You book yourself in online on the website, the Mithraeum. And you can go in there. There's a little immersive display, a little light show. It's absolutely fantastic. Here on the right, this is what tomatoes they want rid of. Around the corner is the Bank of England, the building that sets the interest rates. If anyone wants a word. And as such, we have the station here on the left, Bank Station, part of the London Underground or Tube Network. Now, if you're a pessimist, you'll see that Bank Station is one of the most overly complicated stations in London. It's really difficult to figure out where you're meant to be going to follow any of the directions there. If you're an optimist, though, it's the world's cheapest escape route. We're going to get a view of a, a very tall building. It's called the Walkie Talkie. It's got an observation deck at the top. It is coming up on the left just here, looming over us. Local award for ugliest new building in the world. On the left, we have the monument to the Great Fire of London. Here it is between these two buildings on the left. 200 to the Great Fire of London because after 200 steps, you can really ruin the fire. And then as we head on over on the other side of the river, that very tall building there is the Shard, the tallest building in Western Europe. But have a look on our left because you can see the most photographed bridge in the world. There it is, Tower Bridge. This bridge, quite an old London bridge. It's the most recent of the London bridges, built in the 1970s. It's not going to win any architecture awards. It's not falling down though, so that makes it an improvement on the last few. Yes, Belfast. This is cutting out a little bit. It's no good. The HMS Belfast. Now I buy the world's best vegan cheese store. So the Shard looming over uh, 310 metres tall. That sounds a lot more impressive when you put that in feet because that makes it 1,060 feet tall. There's an observation deck. On your way up there in the express elevator, you will pass restaurants, bars, the Seven Star Shangri-La Hotel, and of course, luxury apartments. You can get a flat in the Shard, for, I'm glad you're sitting down for this, 50 million pounds. The windows at London Bridge Station here on the right, the oldest train station, built to blend in with the buildings coming up on the left, because this is the busiest port in all the world, or at least it was during the Victorian period. Come into this area of London, they called this the old, or London's larder. We're talking herbs, spices, coffee, tea, God knows what they'd be without that.
on our left. This used to be one of the wharves, the warehouses at Riverfront. It's called Hayes Galleria. Well, this is the biggest station you said, right? The oldest station. The oldest, yeah. The pub, the, uh, sorry, the pub ahead of us on the right, this is the Shipwright's Arms. It's where all the sailors would come in for a pint. You can see over the doorway in that woman in silver dress, she is an old figurehead from a tea clipper. Don't look at her for too long though, she's having a bit of a wardrobe malfunction. This whole area burnt down again. Fires were very common. After the 1890s, we established London's Fire Brigade, one of the first fire brigade services in the world. Before that, we had private insurance companies who made. But instead, after that, we had a municipal fire. Here on the left, we can see the first fire station for too long before turning it into a bar and kitchen. Here on the Corn Theatre, a theatre for young people plays there for children in 6 to 26 and then closest stop to London Bridge Station and to Borough Market. Yes. Potter's Field is ahead of us on the left. Now this is a lovely tranquil park. It's visitation, yet we have the bubonic and pneumonic plagues. If you caught the pneumonic plague, you were likely to survive a 50% chance of survival with that. If you caught the bubonic, they would spread indeed, yes, through uh, through the uh, bacteria living on. Poor old Vaden couldn't catch a break, because the next year we had the Great Fire. The bridge, now loads of people sent their designs in. In front of us, we can see here the lovely front edge. This was built in uh, 1894. So it's built to look old Irish granite to make it sympathetic with the Tower of London on the other side of the river. Uh, but for context, so 1894, they'd already built the uh, Brooklyn Bridge over in New York. They'd already built much of the London Underground as well. So you could have uh, gotten the tube to get on the bridge. It still does open about three times a day. It used to open about 50 times a day though. Yeah. They've got a new kind of traffic light signalling system as well. Back in the day though, they used to be what we call a flag man. A bloke with a flag to say stop driving. Now, uh, that was a real problem in the 1950s because we had smog. So much so that there was a double-decker route master being driven by a man called Albert Gunter in 1952 who drove over the bridge as it was opening up. He drove from one arm of the bridge over made a jump from one arm to the other, like a middle-aged evil can evil. Everyone on the bus was fine, apart from him, he broke both his legs. Then he had a royal summons, met the royal family, they paid him £10. It cost about £300, so... What are you going to do with that money? He said... As we head on over, we get lovely views of the financial district there on the other end of the river on the left. Here in the city of London, we give our skyscrapers nicknames. So we've got the gherkin. It looks like a gherkin. The scalpel looks like a scalpel. The cheese grater looks like a cheese grater. And the walkie-talkie, you can finish that sentence off yourselves. As we head on over this next section here, the middle section, this is the basculated bit, the bit that opens up. The towers in between the, uh, the towers here, either side, they've got walkways in between. You can have a walk along them, you get lovely views. They've got glass floors as well, so uh, it's worth steadying, steadying your nerves and also checking you're wearing appropriate clothes for it. And then on the right, you can see the uh, skyscrapers that make up the financial district. The, uh, all the banks of their headquarters over there in Canary Wharf. And also this on the right, this is our uh, port, this is our jetty for the river cruise from stop number 11 all the way down to stop number 5, Westminster and Big Ben. We're on the buildings in London, the Tower of London, that's what we call this complex of 21 towers in fact. 
The middle section, the White Tower, completed in 1070 under the reign of King William II, son of King William the Conqueror. <coughs> it's been a great many things in its day. It's been a royal palace, it's been a zoo. There were lions, tigers, even an elephant kept here in the tower. The only wildlife you can find here now, the, nowadays are, of course, the ravens of the Tower of London. And it said, if the ravens ever leave the tower, then England will fall. So we've clipped their wings. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> you can come in here and visit the crown jewels. They are the real deal. You can find the Star of Africa, the world's largest white cut diamond, used at the top of Great Laugh. They are really fun. They make their tours really entertaining. And they're full of knowledge as well. They've even got their own little community in there, complete with pub. And if you're this... Today our guide is the... I should point out, because this has happened a couple of times, it's not appropriate for kids. Fantastic. Have a lovely day, take care. Come on, coming down, Simon. So we are currently outside of the city of London. We are in the boundary walls of the city of London. You can see there part of the old Roman wall on the right behind the trees in the park. Parts of we can see through those trees on the right there into some of the skyscrapers that make the financial district up here in the city of London. And just in front of us is a lovely old church. This purports to be one of the oldest churches in All Hallows by the Tower. Dates back to the 600s. It's where a man called Samuel Pepys watched the great ones to just keep a diary, write down anything interesting. He saw a fire that destroyed 80% of the city and he hid up at the top of this roof here to write his diary. Now he was at a lot at stake because not only did he have a house inside the city, and cheese. Now back in the 1600s, Parmesan cheese would cost more than your house. So his house burned down, he didn't really care to be honest, he didn't give two monkeys because his cheese was absolutely fine. As we come on down here, on the left this is His Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Any seized illegal goods at the borders come straight into this building. They used to burn them on the riverfront, but in the days that they were burning the drugs. On the left here, this is Billingsgate Fish Market. It used to be an old fishing mar fish market, now it is a conference centre. And it's where Michael Caine used to work. It's also where the Cray Twins used to work as well, the famous gangsters from the 1960s. As we head on down. Right in front of us we can see the side of London Bridge. Now this is the most recent of the London bridges, built in the 1970s. It is not particularly amazing in terms of architecture. However, it's not falling down, so that makes it an improvement on the last few. As we head on down, I want you to have a look. On your left, you're going to see the other side of the river, Southwark. You're going to see Southwark Cathedral, the lovely old church spire here. Here it is, Southwark Cathedral. It's where William Shakespeare, all south of the river. You go over London Bridge, the bridge will get closed up for the night. You can also then pay to spend some time with a, a lady of the night, to put it politely. <laughs> on the left, behind these trees, you can't really see, there's even an escape room on it now. Uh, sailed by Sir Francis Drake, in, but it's right on the front of the river. Really lovely, you, get, you were meant to get some lovely views there, except there was a problem. There's bases, carriages, parades, bands, music. People in an array of strange and exuberant hats. Our most famous Lord Mayor of London was a man called Dick Whittington. He came from the north of England because he found because he heard that the streets of London were paved with gold. These days, the streets of London were the, are paved with a very different night. Now, he was here the Church of Saint Michael Paternoster Royale, the Dick Whittington Church. The last church to be rebuilt after the Mary Poppins. 
Still in for London Bridge. Vintners place here, Vintners are wine merchants. This is their building. They also have a strange job of counting all the swans on the River Thames every year. They're out on boats, pick up all the swans they can find, check they've got the right amount of lakes. Now, as we head on through, that is genuinely their job. As we head on through this tunnel, very difficult to hear me on this, so I'm going to get off the mic, but when we leave this tunnel, I'm going to ask you to have a look on your left. You're going to see what looks like an old factory, but very, very tall chimney. It's actually the Tate Modern, the world's largest collection of modern art. So I'll put it out to you in just a sec. On the right, you might need to crane your necks a little bit with a very tall chimney, the Tate Modern, where you can find some of the works of Cezanne, Mondrian, Picasso, Frida Kahlo, Chris of Philly, Manet, all for free. Now, if modern art isn't your thing, I'd still recommend going in. Not only is it free, it is also, it has a cocktail bar at the top. Uh, after a couple of drinks, the modern art will appeal to you a lot more, I promise. <laughs> We've got a lovely white uh, building here with a pointy black roof. This is the City London School for Boys, where Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter went to school. So some people call it Hogwarts. But as we get past this little bit of traffic, I want you to have a look on your left. Again, you might need to strain your legs a little bit. You're gonna see a rather curvy building, all made of glass and steel. Lots of famous lawyers have come here, including Tony Blair, Cherie Blair, his wife, and Mahatma Gandhi. All passed the exam here on the right. And then here is also where the, in 1602, uh, the first production of Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare was held. William, uh, Twelfth Night starts with Shakespeare's my famous opening line, If music be the food of love, play on. And here is stop number 12. Stop number 12 for Temple Station for the London Underground for the Circle and District Lights. All good up here, Simon, mate. I think we're all settled. But on our left, we get a view here of the National Theatre with a black display screen. It's an absolutely lovely theatre inside, even if you don't like the brutalist exterior. You can get tickets for £10 on a Friday. They call it the Friday Rush. And there's three theatres in. Now this bridge right in front of us, this is a lovely bridge. It's called the Waterloo Bridge. Also called the Ladies Bridge, because it was built during World War II by a team of women. And it is the only bridge in London to be completed on time and under budget. Make of that what you will. And then we've got some uh, lovely, uh, lovely hotel coming up on the right. This lovely uh, grand cream building with the green roof, the Savoy Hotel, where you can get a night in the Royal Gucci Suite for fifteen thousand pounds, and there's a three-night minimum stay. Now here on the left, this is Cleopatra's Needle. This is three and a half thousand years old. This is a genuine ancient Egyptian obelisk. The most exciting thing about this one is we didn't steal this one. <laughs> All right, this was a genuine gift from the Egyptian government. Every other, uh, every other bit of ancient Egyptian things you find in London would probably stop. On our left we've got the Royal Festival Hall. This is what remains of the 1951 Festival of Britain and it's home to the London Philharmonic Orchestra. The biggest Philharmon Philharmonic Orchestra in the world. And then we've got this cycle lane here on the left. You can see there's a little display screen here. This tells us how many people have used it so far this today. So, so far today, about two and a half thousand people. Not bad, it's been quite rainy. Great news for the environment. Uh, we've got the Royal Horse Guards hose inside. And then the London Eye here on the left. You can do all sorts in the London Eye. You can go for, uh, they do pods. You can do so in the morning as well. You can rent the entire London Eye out for yourself for half an hour. All 32 pods for yourself if you want. It will cost you about £45,000 though. There was one actress from Thailand who did this on uh, Valentine's Day. Had beautiful uh, sunset views all around London. 
She spent that time in that pod for herself on a Zoom call. Oh no. Some people are afraid to turn the heat on. As we head on down, on the right, this huge building here is the Ministry of Defence. This is where the police's horses get taken to graze of an evening. The police, they have the headquarters just ahead of us on the right here, New Scotland Yard. The bust of the man here on the right, this is Robert Peel, the man who founded the police force. Got two of our bobbies there out the front. We call them bobbies after Robert Peel. Heading down. Simon. 